Some fighters can be a little bit jerky, irregular, and jittery in their movement patterns. Other fighters can be a little bit more boppy and tall, springy in their step. Some fighters more balanced and settled. And some fighters are free-flowing and fluid, undisrupted in their movement. We often hear the term rhythm used in boxing. We understand what rhythm is when we think of music, but how does that apply to a sport like boxing? Simply defined, rhythm is a strong, regular, repeated pattern of movement or sound. So if a boxer is to have rhythm, we could say that they have a regular pattern of movement. And if they have a regular pattern of movement, how is that a good thing? How does it benefit a boxer? How does it help them win a fight? To help us understand this, we're going to study boxers who have rhythm, boxers who don't have rhythm, and boxers who know how to break their rhythm. Terence Crawford, one of the most fluid, relaxed, rhythmic boxers in the sport today. There is a certain calm and presence to his boxing. Everything appears to be on his terms. He attacks and doesn't seem rushed. When he defends, he keeps his rhythm. He's completely unaffected by what's standing in front of him. He truly boxes his own fight. You can see that when he attacks, he's not rushing anything. He's doing it when his feet are set. It's working off his rhythm and he's defending off his rhythm. Ultimately, he's staying within his own rhythm, which means that he gets to fight his fight. He stays in control. And the longer he stays in control, he can turn the fight in his favor. In this sequence, we can see Crawford increase his output. The activity is increasing, but his rhythm stays the same. Every punch comes off the rhythm. He doesn't have to change himself in order to throw more punches. So he's still not rushing, but he's throwing more. Two incredible rhythm fighters, Manny Pacquiao and Juan Manuel Marquez. In this case, we'll look closely at Marquez. He's the slower boxer, Pacquiao has the speed, the full work, but Marquez has the rhythm and the timing. And timing always beats speed. Like Crawford, Marquez boxes to his own rhythm. Pacquiao is clearly a faster fighter than Marquez. But Marquez, rather than trying to match Pacquiao's speed, uses his rhythm and timing to counter Pacquiao. Again, you can see there is a greater level of control and balance to this work. To compare, we look to a fighter like Amir Khan, who, although incredibly talented, often gets caught fighting outside of his own rhythm. Here you can see Khan rush a triple jab, you can see the punches come faster than his feet can keep up, which throws him off balance and allows Crawford to negate the attack. You can see as a comparison Crawford throwing a triple jab, he's much more patient. He has his feet set, which allows him to follow up, but also you can see that Khan is much more affected by them. Here Khan rushes an attack and Crawford just by catching his own stance is able to counter him effectively. Crawford didn't really do anything different, he just continued to throw punches off his own rhythm. Here we see Khan slow his pace down a little bit to box within his rhythm, and you see how much cleaner the punches come out. This is another good example of how timing will beat speed. Just by slowing it down, Khan's able to land some punches. So we've seen what it means for a fighter to box within rhythm and out of rhythm. And here we have Manny Pacquiao, who has an incredible talent to break rhythm. This means that he's able to create a rhythm, break it, and then return back to that rhythm. This makes it incredibly difficult to try and time him, as there's this change to his rhythm consistently. Take a look at Pacquiao's rhythm from the trunk. He bends and rocks his shoulders, but then he breaks it by stutter stepping and throwing the jab. The stutter step is the break of rhythm and then he goes back to that rocking from the shoulders. Sometimes he'll punch from the stutter step and then other times he'll punch from the rock. Makes it really unpredictable where the punches will come from. This is actually a really strong attribute that Pacquiao has developed into his later career. 
It's a very technical element that he didn't have early on. He predominantly had the fast feet and rushed his attacks with incredible athleticism. And he sometimes gets caught up in this when he has Marquez hurt, as you can see here. This actually doesn't work out well for him later into this fight, and we'll see how that plays out. If breaking the rhythm stops your opponent being able to time you, then what happens if you stick to a rhythm too long and too consistently? Keeping in mind these guys have fought each other now four times, so they're well and truly aware of each other's patterns. In this sequence, Pacquiao goes on to make a very minor mistake which costs him dearly. Pacquiao gives his attack away by adopting his fast footwork and stutter stepping, something that Marquez has seen over and over again. And Marquez, with a beautifully timed counterpunch, walks him straight into a rear hand, finishing the fight. So we've established that rhythm is incredibly important to be able to fight your own fight and time an opponent. But if you hold that rhythm too long, your opponent may time you. So in that case, what is the answer? For this, I look to Jorge Linares, one of the most naturally gifted boxers I've ever seen. He's obviously very well schooled and fundamentally one of the most skilled boxers you can find, but this is coupled with beautiful balance, rhythm and timing. Let's have a look at how Linares can change his rhythm and timing in mid-moment. Just in this sequence, we'll see him rolling his shoulders, using lots of head movement, countering, feet quite set. He'll get up onto his toes and use fast feet, higher tempo rhythm. And then he'll come somewhere in between and sort of drop down and rock between his, his stance. It's incredibly versatile and obviously very hard to predict. We can see really clearly from someone like Linares, who is so talented, that everything he does is so fluid. It's all natural for him, regardless of the rhythm that he's in. He seems as if he can defend an attack effortlessly. This is because he's moving within his own rhythm. He's unaffected by what DeMarco is doing to him, regardless of what DeMarco throws, regardless of how DeMarco behaves. Linares sticks to his rhythm and everything flows from that. The lesson to be learned of this is that everybody has their own rhythm and every boxer will create their own rhythm in time with enough experience. And once finding that rhythm, it's important to know it and understand it because it's yours and it's natural for you. It will allow you to fight your own fight. And really, that's what we're all trying to do at the end of the day. I'll leave a link to this fight at the bottom of this clip. It's worth watching to study Linares' rhythm and ability to change it. But it's also an incredible fight to watch as it really conveys everything great about boxing. It's where talent and pure athleticism meets determination and grit and two stories collide. It's one of my favorite fights of modern day era and definitely worth watching for the enjoyment.